wanted to wait till um, the roommate was up before I started making a video. Uh, let me see if I can sum this up pretty quickly. Uh, let me think, let me think. So, yes, current support based on Adam Antini's tweet is now 3955. We tested 3955 um, already, pre-market. Come on, come on. Right here, we formed a 30-minute demand and a 15-minute demand. Right here, we retested just as the market opened. I didn't get in as low as I like. I got in at 47, and I put my stop loss right around 40, hoping that the bulls wouldn't drop that low. And it looks like for now, they've turned it around, thankfully, because we're forming a supply here. So it's pushing back up. I don't remember what the target was, but I think the target is 3975. No. No, this is not the right one. I hate Twitter so much. 39. Okay. 4,000 is the, is the goal. So right up here, somewhere between here and here, actually, I should have adjusted this, but I, I didn't bring it as low as Adam Mancini thinks it's going to go. I, I should have moved it lower. Um, but today's OPEX day. And I hate trading OPEX days. They tend to be pretty choppy. So um, I'm hoping, and this is the 397 strike. So we're not that far away. Actually, no, we are far away. I forget. It's it's 396 would have been more equivalent to 4,000. So I need to exit maybe like around 395 or maybe high 394s. Um, <clears throat> to see if I can possibly make some make up some of the losses I've had this week. Um, what I thought about doing when we dip down here is getting in another option, but then that'll be my entire account. But I just wanted to see if I can scalp like 30, 40 bucks. Um, I mean, I'm still not even $10 in profits right now. I mean, twenty dollars in profits until I can hit fifty-seven. But it is just as choppy as I predicted it would be. And I'm using the ODTE, so the longer this thing chops, the more theta is going to hurt. So basically for this option, the low is 40 and the high is 50, right now 53. That's basically it. I know one of my biggest problems with trading ES and SPY is my impatience. I need to sit back and wait, wait much longer for things to come to fruition. And I don't do that. Okay, let's take this off for now. Let's plan um, on selling at, I'm not sure what it would be here. Let's try 87. That looks about okay. But I don't know if it'll get that high, to be honest. This was the peak. This is what Adam Mancini was targeting yesterday for 4,000. So I don't know if we'll get that far. Part of me is thinking I shouldn't be greedy. And once this hits 67, I should sell one. Make $20 profit there. If it can get that high. And it looks like it almost did. And then hold on to the other one and see how that goes. But look, we're already dropping.
So, yeah, I'll be back to keep you updated, but my fear is this is going to drop um, any moment. And I, no, I don't want to talk about what Adam said in this newsletter, but it just won't work for it. It'll work for our futures, but it won't work for our options. Basically, he's suggesting that we I, I wait until this rally is a bit higher. And then once it gets above a certain point, then there's more surety that I can take it long. The problem is that it only has, it only gives me like a, on ES, it's like a 10 point move. So on SPY, it, it's not really going to help for the options. I need a bigger move. And look, just like that, I went from being over $20 in profit to now I'm back to being break even, almost negative. That's pretty bad though. That's very dis disconcerting. That's a pretty big push. Although this first 15 minute candle still hasn't closed yet, but I was hoping it'll close up here. Instead it's closing into a doji and a red. That's bad. And just like that, I went from being if, if this went to almost 67, it would have been almost $40 in profits. I should have just sold here. But I was just talking about how my impatience and my selling early burns me. And look. minutes until this candle closes and the bulls really don't want to close right here they really need to close above this <clears throat> and they're failing well i'm not surprised i was shocked that i wasn't positive i mean that that never happens for me hardly ever which probably this is which is why I sell early all the time because in those rare moments where I take a trade and it actually goes in my favor, I tend to trade and sell early because I'm shocked. It that never happens. I can't believe I'm doing this, but this is very risky. But look, I'm going to. No, no, I'm not going to. I was going to add to my position, but I'm not going to. Not on a day like today. It's just too. It's too volatile. And look, bulls are failing. This is making me nervous. I'm not liking this at all. It's like a tug of war here. Wow. <clears throat> this is, yeah, this is bad. Okay. Well, <clears throat> I should have sold up here, and I didn't. I could have made over almost $40. I think it would have been like around Hoping the bulls will turn it around. But I don't think they will. I have a feeling this is going to come back down to retest this level. Yeah. 
Yeah, this is going to sell any moment. This is the bulls cannot keep it up. I mean, they're trying, but the bears keep pushing it back down. With every effort the bulls make to push this up, the bears equally make an effort to push it back down. And I have a feeling the bears are going to win out. There it is. All right, well, it's another red day. I mean, I don't know, I tried. We had our, our demand being created, confluent with Adam and Sini's level. Market opened, it dipped down, I got in. It came up, I should have sold. I should have sold here. I was just hoping to get this to 67. Would have been nice if I had gotten in maybe like around 43, 41. Then I can sell at 61, Again, the bulls brought it up and the bears just knocked it right back down. Yeah, I knew this was going to sell no matter what. But then again, I probably should have never gone long and I should have waited for this to come back down to retest this 30 minute demand. I just didn't think it would test so close because Adam and Sini said it's an extremely important level and the bulls don't want it to be tested more than once. There it is. There goes my loss. So from $30 in profits to now like, I think it's like $15 in the hole. Well, now let's see if, if the universe does what it always does with me. Let's see if after I've sold, it will now immediately turn around and go in my favor. That's generally the pattern that normally happens. <clears throat> or am I right? Will this go down and retest this area again? $17 loss. That's what the total is today. <laughs> this will make, I think, the sixth or seventh day in a row that I've been negative. Looks like I was right. What did I put my stop loss at? What did I sell at 39? 
this dipped as low as 38 and right back around I'm telling you man it is just like clockwork if I don't use a stop loss it'll keep dropping and I'll lose more money the moment the moment I sell then it will turn around it it's it's just it's just amazing man it's just amazing I, I I actually feel like I have control over the entire market if I if I want the market to go down I just take a long I just take a call and as the market starts to go down if I want the market to turn around and go back up all I have to do is just sell my stop loss and somehow almost to the dollar wherever I sell my stop loss <clears throat> that's when the market will turn around it's it's not possible for me to be this consistent in in calling the bot the, the bottoms of the turnaround it's not you know the only thing i can probably do but i know what's going to happen if i do it but the only thing i can probably do is i can instead of selling my stop loss i add to my position i buy another position but i know what's going to happen if i do that if i double down on a, on what seems to be a losing trade I'm just going to throw more money away. That's what's going to happen. You cannot make this shit up, dude. I guess what I have to do now is maybe put my stop loss way down here. But the problem is if I put my stop loss down here where the demand was formed, by the time we get down here, this option is going to be worth like maybe $20. So I'll be losing more than half of my investment. But look, look, it's turning around. It's taking a while, but it's turning around. I remember I sold at 38. I'm just gonna have to wait if this candle closes um, above this level then I can probably try another attempt at taking it long but I'm I'm kind of done I'm so I'm so fucking tired of trading man I have to be honest it's just It is, it is literally as if I'm cursed and I'm hexed that every trade I take immediately turns against me and every stop loss I initiate immediately turns in my favor. I'm reading the tweets, the tweet responses for Adam Mancini, and all these people are just saying how they've 
won money from his newsletter and how great one guy apparently made almost three thousand dollars I must be the only loser that keeps losing money but then again I'm not doing futures I'm doing options What's also interesting is this this bounce that occurred right here is a retracement of more than 50% of the rally yesterday. So that's another reason why I had taken it long. I thought to myself, okay, we, we've retraced half the move and we've bounced at a key level and we've made us a, a demand form. Um, it should be looking good. I still can't believe <laughs> that this thing turned around. It hasn't, 38 was my sell. The lowest that went was 37. Oh my God, dude. Still, this candle is about to close in a couple minutes, and we formed a supply. It's not the cleanest looking one, but it's still a supply. It's okay. Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna I'm gonna put in a buy in at 38. Right. That's been the lowest that's been dipping up on average 38. There it is. Now, it'll fall. Oh, the lowest has been was 36 actually. Now it's gonna go lower than 36 now that I'm in the trade. Mm-hmm, 37. Thirty-five. There we go. This candle is going to close any moment. Notice it's been hovering around thirty-eight or above for the longest, right? After I sold my stop loss, keeps looking like it's going to rise back up. Now that I've gotten back into the trade, now we can't. Now remember, my trade was I got in at thirty-eight. Now it just can't seem to get thirty-eight anymore. Wow. I'm not getting excited because this bull, this candle just started. So. You know, the sad thing is I got in at 47. If I was still in my position from before, I would, and maybe if I add it to my position, I'll be able to break even with the slight profit at this point. No, more than like, more likely break even. And what worries me is even though the bulls have pushed pretty hard, they, um, they're still getting battled back by the uh, the bears.
I should have absolutely sold up here, man. I'm wondering where all this effort from the bears is coming from. I wonder if I had doubled down and added to my position at say like 37, 36. I don't know how much that would have averaged me down. I don't think I would have enough in my account to do more than just one more average down, one more buyout. But if I had two options at 47, that might have just brought me down to like maybe 43, 44. I don't know. I gotta take this. Okay, um, here we go. Let's let's count this as another loss. We'll just go ahead and exit here, and done. I, that's it. I'm done trading for the day. I've had enough. This is. Oh my God, Jesus Christ, man! You cannot make this crap up. Well, we got to. We made a new high of the day. We got as high as fifty three, fifty four. I should have sold there and would have made up for most of the losses today, but I was distracted by the phone. And of course, it came right back down to where I initially got in. And I decided to sell here at 38 once again. Oh no, was it 37 for another loss? Yeah, it was 37 for another, a dollar, $2 loss. So I can point out what's gonna happen now. Watch, trust me when I say this, this is gonna turn around and come back up now. But what's amazing, look, it's $35. That's the low here. Up here, it's $35. Even though down here earlier, it was $38 down here. That's how much theta decay kicks in. And this is what happens when this when the price chops up and down like this. The theta just is terrible. It's terrible. Remember, I got in at 47 down here. It was worth 47 way up here. That's why with options, you can't play around with this crap. You keep sitting here waiting for it to go in your favor. And even though it's getting higher, the price is going higher, you're still losing money. And this, I, you know what? I need to make a new rule not to trade OPEX days. I hate OPEX days. They're the worst days to trade. And I, I don't even know why. There's no like good news, bad news, whatever. The price just is so random and choppy most of the day. And then maybe later on in the afternoon, that's when it makes a move. But I can't stand this. Look at this spike, this doji here, this very bullish looking candle, except for this wick here. This is bearish looking. Look at this, it's like an inverted hammer. This is gonna turn red in, in a bit if this keeps dropping like this. 
It's just a mess. Whereas pre-market, nice and smooth movements. Adam and Cini predicted we'll get up to 4,000. We peaked at 4,000. Another retest. And then nice little drop here someone could have made money off of. So if I was trading futures, I would just set my sell limit at, you know what? I wouldn't be looking at SPY if I was trading futures. If I was trading futures, I would set my sell limit right here. We got, I think Adam Asini said 4010 was his target. So I'll put my sell limit just below to play it safe. Boom. And then immediately turn and go for short. He said 3955 was the next um, support. Boom, 3955. I would much rather trade futures than trade options and just deal with this because it's far more clean and predictable. And then here, if I went long at 3955 with futures, I don't have to worry about theta decay or all this other stuff. I would be in profits. From what I recall from this research I did of, of, of futures, I think for every like 25 cents, this thing goes up you make like $12, $13, something like that. I forget. There was a there was a video that I saved on how you can do um, a think or, think, think or swim script that will show up on the top screen the, um, the profit and the delta of the futures. So, but I think that was for the regular ES. If I looked at the ES micro, you know what? Just out of curiosity, let's look this up. Yes, micro current um, delta. Uh, yes, micro contract <clears throat> price. I don't want to look at the sponsored crap. Okay, I think this might tell it. Micro mini ES multiplier. So for every 25 cents, you make $1.25. Of course, for every 25 cents, you it goes down, you lose $1.25. I'm not sure what this multiplier means. Yeah, I'm not really sure what that means. That doesn't, of course, they don't really explain it because it's freaking tree TD Ameritrade. But let's just focus on this. For every 25 cents, you get a dollar 25. So basically, if I went long here, just above 3955, this is 3955, 3990. That's like 40 points. That's a 40 point rise. I could sell and make good money right there. I mean, I don't know, I, I don't even know how to calculate 25 cents of each of these moves. I guess I have to take 40 and divide it by four or multiply it times four actually, since there's four 25 cents in a dollar. So yeah, whatever, I will take whatever movement from here to here, dollar movement, multiply that times four, and that's how much money I would have made in futures micro mini. <clears throat> much more preferable than dealing with this options bullcrap. Unfortunately, for each contract, I would need, I think, I don't know, a lot more than what I have now. Well, that's it. That's another day down in the hole, another loss, I think for a total of like $18, $20 today. And it just keeps getting worse and worse. Still, still can't believe it, man. All right, that's enough. Quick update. After this rejection, when we made a new high, this, from what I, I should have said this before, from what I recall, when price rallies makes a new high of the day, slightly higher than the previous high of the day, Sorry, excuse me, and it's still fairly early in the day. <clears throat> the, 
this is a bearish signal and um, price typically drops here I could have flipped and tried to go short but I I'm just was so tired of trading at that point um, <clears throat> It looks like we failed. This definitely is some sort of supply. I wouldn't be surprised if this shows a clean 30 minute supply. Yeah, there it is. I'm actually gonna move this slightly up. That's a clean 30 minute supply. This could be considered a failed retest or whatever. And this is a drop. Um, I could risk a short, but I don't even have enough money. I could try a 386 short, but it needs to turn back around, but it's not going to, it looks like. So had I taken that short, oh yeah, this is dropping. Let's try a 385. Let's see if this pulls back a little bit. I want to see if we can retest this, um this 30 minute support that was created. I'm just gonna raise this up. Oh yes, I'm looking at ES. I need to look at SPY. Ah uh, yeah, I don't think I can, I can get back in here. The most I can do is maybe 20, but I don't know if it'll turn back around that high. In fact, if it does, then one might say one could argue that that's um, a recovery. So I'm I'm just gonna try and watch it to the side while I try and finish up this project I'm doing. Um, uh, there it is. You know what? I'm gonna risk it. Ah, I had a chance to get in, but I didn't. No, this is risky. Adam Mancini said the support is 3955 to 3947. We're currently at 3955 on ES. There's no point in me taking this short. Yeah, sorry, this I, I, I might end up being right, but I just don't want to risk any more money. All right, I'm watching this on the side and it looks like we just started a new 15 minute candle. Is it possible that this might form, excuse me, a demand under this demand and then work its way up or are the bears going to push this down because if bears can push this down below 3947 then the support breaks because the support is between I think 3947 or 3945 but let me see what I have I, what I have is different from Adam and Sini's a little bit yeah I have 3946 to 3955 that's my support Um, because I found a, a hour and a 30 minute supply, I mean, uh, demand. So this key level here, and look, look, yep. It looks like we may be forming a 30 minute demand zone. I don't even know if I'm gonna bother taking that long though, if it does form. <laughs> Let's look where my previous option was that was nine seven mm -hmm. remember what i said that if i put my stop loss down here below here then this is going to be worth about twenty dollars so yeah if i had kept my stop loss here and waited first of all this this is like maybe i could have broke even <clears throat> this is where i should have sold this morning i made my 30 bucks that was a mistake but again, when this was happening, I was actually talking about how often I sell early and I miss out on massive profits. Oh, look, look. Yep. You know what? Here's what I'm going to do. We're back at... Mm, let me see. I just said I wasn't going to do this since we're right at support. You know what? No, this is stupid. 
I, I need to just, I'm done. There should be no more trading for me today. Well, it looks like that trade that I was thinking of taking it short would have paid off. If I could have gotten in at 20, there we go. Three nine four seven was the final support. After here, after this point, it should start to drop. The next spot I think is three nine. Let's back this up. Three nine four zero I think is the next spot down, or three nine three six. So there it goes. I would already be about twelve dollars in profit right now. Had I taken this short. And even if I wanted to go to the next option down, that's too late now. I still can't even, I don't have enough money for that one either. <laughs> so it's funny how when I think about taking a risk and I decide not to, it turns out it would have worked in my favor. But when I do take the risk, it burns me. What can you do? One thing that I think I might start changing is um, it means I'm going to have to take far less trades, but Adam Mancini loves failed breakdowns. He loves them and he says they're a lucrative um, strategy for him to trade. Still, I, I don't quite know how to recognize a failed breakdown or a failed breakout. Um, but generally speaking, from what I can tell, is you have a, let's say this was a resistance, and boom, this, this, you, I, I was going to ask him a tweet, but I don't think this is a resistance for him, or is it 3985? I don't, I don't think so, but anyways, let's say it was a major resistance, and this would be the fake breakout right here. It'll look more appropriate if this line was flushed, if this candle flushed with this one, and then we had this wick of a breakout, and then we had our subsequent fall. Now, for this to be a fake breakdown, I would say within 10, 15 minutes, bulls will need to turn this candle around and rip this back up. But that's not happening. Um, you know what, as I'm yakking away, this went back this actually went back down to where I could have bought in again, but I was I was busy sending my email project and getting a notice that a bunch of people that I've called and actually asked to verify their email, spelled the email to them, made sure it was the correct spelling. Turns out the email doesn't work. All right. So yeah, I don't know if I could have gotten back in, but it looks like this is going to be a, a point of contention, contention right here. This, this support zone here that Adam and Sini pointed out, so I don't know. Um, but yeah, I need to probably start looking at fake breakouts and fake breakdowns as a means of trading. This didn't happen. This wasn't a fake breakout or breakdown. This was just a retest. Hold on. I'm sorry. Let's see if I can catch it since it keeps moving around. This is just a, re a close retest of previous day's support. In fact, I would argue that if I put this on a 30 minute, that um, if you can average these wicks, maybe you have to do a higher time frame. But what I'm trying to say is I think a supply, if I can consolidate this better, a supply would be formed here and then it was retested here. Let's try a two hour. No, it doesn't work like that. Well, whatever. But yesterday, the support was 3.8. Not yesterday, but on, on Wednesday, the support was 3.855. Wait, this is, this is Wednesday. Was it 3.855? Or three eight six five. I don't remember. Whatever. The point is three eight five five was a major point of support. And um which one was it that killed me on with the chop? I think it was this day 
all of the chop. I don't remember, man. I think it was Wednesday. Wednesday's chop is what killed me. But we we're chopping around 3885. That's right. 3885 was support. This was the major support. And we kept chopping around it. It was like a magnet oscillating back and forth above and below. And then yesterday, we tested just above 3885 at 3895. And then we had our rally. This would have been a good short today. But anyways, so yeah, look. This uh, this short that I thought about taking, should have taken it. <clears throat> if this falls below, you know what? I'm going to put another alert. If this gets... Um, if this gets below 21... Although I think if the bulls manage to bring this back up again, then that means the bears are failing to drop this. But what I should have done was I should have looked to get back in close to a retest of previous support, which looks like it happened here. Let's go to a one minute. Yep. Previous support. Retested. So the best time to get in would have been at, what is this, 1038? 1038. Let's go here, 10.38, right here. Could have gotten at like $19. Look at that. There it is. $20 profits right there. It's going to hit 40. There it is. $20 profit could have been made. At least I would have made up for the losses for today had I taken that short. And this low right here at 10.01 is that spike here. Actually, no, that's weird. This is the low. That's weird. But anyways, this is going to drop now. Unless this is going to be a fake breakdown and bulls can recover the support at 3.947, but I don't know. Oh, oh, sorry. Let me add one more thing, too. Like I mentioned before, Adam Mancini, I believe, said if this support fails, our next spot is 3935, which is a major support as well. So if I was short, I might hold up until maybe 3938, meaning that this can probably get as high as $50. Meaning if I had taken it short, I could have made 30 bucks today, not 20. But I highly doubt that this is going to come back up to retest. This was the spot I should have gotten in. I wasn't even paying attention. It didn't even occur to me um, that I could do that. That if we come back and retest, I was hoping this might come back above, which it did do. It did do, but it pulled back down. But then this new candle formed. And we came pretty close to retesting this support, which now is resistance. So this should grind its way back down. I mean, granted, the bulls could right now take over 3947 and reclaim it, create a demand, and then rally, or at least get get us back up above um, 3955, where they can then chop and base from there. But um, if they fail... Failing that, this is going to fall to 3935. Alright, one update. But I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to take a break for the rest of the day because it's, it's thankfully slow because it's Friday. But um, not the market, but the work. But we created a clean demand here. Got retested. Bulls are holding the, um, the level. They're managing to hold it for now. But um, I'm still not sure if I want to take this long at this point. Um, the 395, I could have maybe taken that one if I if I maybe got in at the retest of the demand zone. The 396 I can still get into, but I don't know if we're going to get that high. Let me go to a spy and see what that looks like. Oh, look, we retested the 
the I was on the phone for a while with a friend of mine, but we did retest. We formed a demand just above the January 22 trend line. So you know what? That's enough confluences that I might consider it. Let's see. If we can pull back enough on a 395, I would try getting in, but I don't think I, I, I don't have enough funds for it. So let's go ahead and just switch to the 396 and just take that long. Let's see how this works for me. How much you want to bet? The band formed, got retested. Now that I'm in the long, it's going to get retested again. We we just started this. Well, hold on. Is this the beginning or the end? This got to be, yeah, this is the beginning of the candle. So let's see what happens. I'm just going to put the stop loss down here at 10. If I lose 8 bucks, I lose 8 bucks. Um, and just walk away from this and see where it goes. I'll put an alert because this might likely be a resistance right here. Let's go a little bit lower and see if we can make it up to there. Um, again, this is 396. 396 is way up here. So I highly doubt that the rest of this day bulls are going to somehow manage to get from here all the way up there. But it's possible. Oh, you know what? I have not once discussed the VIX today. Let's just look at this really quick. Yeah, the other reason why I, I went um, long early this morning was because we were pushing off of this daily. We we're falling. But as you can see here, we made it. Oh, I just realized we just made it to this daily and rejected. And then there's our fall. So looks like we, we rejected against this SMA. What I would like to see is this fall back down to this daily at the very least. So in fact, I'm going to put another alert here. This gets below right here. This would be a spot I would want to sell. Again, I don't think it's going to go down there. We'll have to see. So the arrival to this point might be confluent to the arrival at previous resistance or previous support. But I wish I was paying attention to see this 15 minute demand form and then get retested. Unfortunately though, by the time this gets up to here, this might be worth only like $24, $25. So I'm, I won't be making any real money. But I'm just trying to see if I can maybe get one positive trade. This, again, this makes me wish I had sold here when I was long earlier and made my 30 bucks. And when I saw this, this would have this should have prompted me to take this short with whatever I had left and try and make a little more money. <clears throat> At least taking it to 3947. But anyways, let's see where this goes. Oh, just to update, just because you, you got to laugh at this. We made our way back above this previous level, right? This was support from pre-market and then boom, rejected hard and fell. I, I again, I'm going to have a rule where when it's OPEX day, I am not trading. Absolutely frustrating. So let's add this as another loss in addition to the previous loss for the day. So it would have been better if I had just chosen a put, the put that I was thinking of doing earlier. The one, actually, no, that wasn't it, but it doesn't matter. No, let's look at the one I wanted to look at before. It was the 385 put. That's the one I was looking at before. We went down to $13 with this rejection here. Could have gotten at 13 and taken this down and made 20 bucks. Instead, I've lost more money for the day. So I think it's now over $25 lost for the day. <laughs> Incredible, man. Incredible. So 
So let's clarify. Let me see how much we've lost of the, the rally began yesterday at 386. We're now at 389. We've pretty much lost almost all the rally. The most, the, the biggest part that's funny, if yesterday I had taken a put at um, what it, 395, if I had taken a 390 put yesterday, actually, you know what? Doesn't make any sense because this would have eradicated whatever profits you might have thought you were going to get. You probably would have sold for the stop loss, but man, what a freaking turnaround this is. I remember I told you that we're going to eventually wake, make our way to 3935, which is the next support on ES that Adam and Sini offered? Well, here we go. 3939, just a few points away. So if I had just stayed with my bearish bias and waited, I could have gotten into a put here. No, I could have gotten to even better put. Which one was it? I keep forgetting. It's a 39. 387, no, 386, it was a 386. So look at this. I could have got in here at 20 and sold at almost 60. It's gonna make its way to 3935. It's just gonna take some time. But again, if you were doing futures, you could have taken this short. You could have shorted the, the break of 3947 here and just held, maybe put your stop loss over here at 3955. Although the stop loss probably would have been kicked in, but then just taking this short to 3935 and made your profits. Remember every 25 cents, what was it like? Like, I forget, I forget what it was. I think I already closed it, but whatever. Anyways, just every single trade today has been made all a loss, every single one. Three trades, three losses. One thing about options, though, if, if you really want to avoid dealing with the drama of theta decay, you just want to play around with in the money options. So let's say when we got this spike way up here and that was at 3992, let's switch to I don't want to switch to spy. Just well, I have no choice. Let's switch to. Oh, my God, dude. What is this? XCME? What is that? Oh, are these the options for... Interesting. Okay, this is what I wanted. Oh no, this is what I'm doing wrong. Sorry, I'm out of it. Okay, so when we had this... And it turns out I asked Adam Mancini. I mean, he's a great guy. He, he actually still bothers to reply to me. I asked him if this would be considered a breakout of the 3985 resistance but he said it 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 could be considered one but it's a very poor one <clears throat> <clears throat> from what i understand based on what he's saying based on what he's saying um profitable fake breakouts and fake breakdowns <clears throat> occur at the extremes of a range <clears throat> or outside of a um outside of a, a, a pattern that's formed. So this really isn't a range. We're not at a range. You know, we, we just broke out of a range here and this isn't really an extreme range break. It's not even, we're, we're actually back in the range. So, sorry again, this is not really good. This is not really considered a fake breakout. But in any case, um, what I wanted to point out, what I wanted to mention is that this, once I saw this happening, although we didn't really form a clean 30 minute demand, I mean supply, I guess we did here, but this, this, this is not a retest. This looked like it was a breakout of the 30 minute supply, but it wasn't. So if you decided to take this short, you would want to pick a in the money option to avoid any theta decay of like 392, 393. At that time, if you had gotten in, let's say, let's say somewhere in this candle, so this one formed at 10 o'clock, let's say you got in at 10, 10, $415, right? And you decided to just hold 
until we finally reached this point here, which is confluent to ES's 3935 level, which I have here. Although I, I, I prop mine slightly up to 3936 because I, I found a, I think it was an hour support or a 30 minute support that was more confluent than 3935. And as you can see, let me zoom this in to a, a five minute. We came, let me just do a minute. We came extremely close to that level at um, 1125. So 1125, which I bet you is this one right here, would be the time to sell. And it was worth 340 something dollars at that point. So this, this would have been a great short and oh my God. And let's say you didn't get in here. Look at this, a retest up to here. And this is where I screwed up. This is where I went long and got burned. If I had taken this short in the money, again, this was, uh, 1134, 1134, here, here. So this is not massive amounts of profits, but still. Um, anyways, that, that was my update. I don't really have much else to say. You know what? I, I, I'm also curious. I tried looking at my video that I uploaded yesterday and it's all a blurry mess. So I think something happened with this stupid program, this OBS nonsense, where the the image quality has gone down. So I'm, I'm going to have to look and see what went wrong here. Because I remember looking on YouTube and finding um, something that that I changed. And when I changed this, this became better quality. So unfortunately, of course, because, you know, as much as I despise computers and programs, it must have reset itself back to the old setting because the image was just blurry yesterday. And there's no excuse for that. I mean, it's not like I'm, I'm recording a 4K video. This is it's just no reason for it to look as blurry as it did. So apologies for that. But anyways, I want to do a quick update to show VIX. Look. We worked our way back down to this level and then rejected and came and we're coming back down, which is why it looks like we're maybe rallying right now. You know what? I want to add something else to the VIX on my discussion about the VIX. <clears throat> I wonder if I should start using the VIX more seriously when I'm making trades. Let me let me show you this. On on Wednesday, even though we we had a bunch of chop on Wednesday, the VIX clearly hit this four hour um, level and then rejected hard. And it was after like around one o'clock or something on a Wednesday. Wednesday that we rallied right on Thursday Thursday we were rallying off this four-hour level this price action didn't have any relevance we did have an initial rejection but we just blasted through it and this is where I had sold unfortunately for a loss if I had waited to see what happens at this rejection before I sold or no, I sold here. That's right. I, it was rejection here. This is, you know what? Here's what it is. I shouldn't have taken a trade here. I should have waited for a reaction on VIX here. Then we had this reaction here, this rejection. Then if I was going to go long, I would either wait for it to bounce back here or form a red candle, which it did here. And this is where you would go long, right? Today, Today, although although today I went I went long because we were rejecting off of here, so that was a good plan, but it just didn't work out in my favor. Or it did, but I should have sold. 
Then we had another rejection that came down here, but up clearly the bears stepped in hard and brought this back down. This was the apparent 10 o'clock fake breakout of 3985. Now, if I was thinking of going short, I should have done it at the break of this level here and held up until we reached here. And of course, look, we're now rejecting here, like I said before. Now, it wouldn't surprise me if we start to rally from this point. It doesn't look like much of a rally for now, but we had a clean rejection of the VIX. We have a demand that formed. Um, where we, we just recovered the January 22 trend line. And you know what? Let me go ahead and name this because, of course, you know, it's there. It just won't show. And we're recovering. And we've already recovered 3947. Once bulls get this about 3955, I wouldn't doubt that we're going to chop or just continue going up from there. So I need to start making my trades considering the VIX more closely. Let's put this back to a 1 and 15. Okay. Okay, in my last video, I think I showed VIX and I discussed how we had a rejection here, which was confluent to the support this clean demand that was formed here. So we have 11.30, 11.45. I was thinking that it might reject and make its way all the way down to this daily, but it didn't quite make it there. Um, it looks like that we, it looks like we're just, just shy of getting to the daily demand, daily demand, just this daily level here. Um, but even still, if you had taken a 391 call, I'll go back to SPY. If you took the call option here, or better yet here, would be a, a more safe entry. So at 12 o'clock, it really didn't come back to test that support though. Um, unfortunately, that would have been good. Although it is testing it right now, but I, I, the fact that we keep making lower highs makes me wary that this is going to make its way back up any higher. Still, nonetheless, let's say you took your trade at or about 12 o'clock. Uh, 12 o'clock is right about here. Let's see a little bit after 12. Let's say you got in at 80 here or even 90, and you held till the previous support that was made just pre-market, so you might be selling at 391. Let's say you sold uh, here a little bit after 1230. So you would have made, well, if you held it to that very point up here where it peaked, it would have gotten you almost $100 profit. But if you just scalped to say 120, then you would have made $40 $400 or $4,000, depending on how many options you picked, uh, one, 10, or 100. But this drop down, this retest of this demand, though, doesn't look very promising. And once again, we're right back at the January. Trying to see if I can make that any bigger. I should have made this five. I don't know why I didn't do that. Clearly, a important trend line. Um. So yeah. I'm not taking this because I don't have any more funds and I also have to leave in a little bit for a client. So uh, my trading day is done. This might be my last video. In fact, um, if something more significant occurs when I get back from trading my client and I see it, I'll comment about it and I'll post it. Um, I did check out YouTube a little bit ago and YouTube is recommending some other channel that this girl does spy trading. Um, but again, I, I'm 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 just tired of following listening to anyone other than Adam Mancini. I don't want to listen to and follow anyone unless they show actual live trades. I don't know why no one does that. I, I would think you know, I, I don't know. I really don't know. Even if I was doing this successfully and I was knocking out, you know, eighty percent trades, whatever, whatever, I I want others to know how to do that. I would show that. I would show my wins, I would show my strategy, my plans, whatever, whatever. The, the notion of charging someone, I don't know, that's just me. Anyways.